Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion and today I'm going to show you how to make this depth reveal effect in motion. So there you go, looks like that. But first of all, we will need to do a little bit of work in Blender. So to get this effect to work, we need to set up our 3D output to give us the elements that we need to create the composite. So here we are in Blender. I'll give you a link to this scene and you can work through it as well if you want. But I will give you a frame of each individual pass so you can work with that if you, if you don't fancy doing your own renders. So the first thing I want to point out is that I'm going to do this in Eevee. Just makes life a little bit simpler. If you're going to work in cycles, things will look different. So make sure you know enough about Blender that you don't get confused if you're trying to work in cycles. So what we want to do is we want different passes for the different elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the floor first of all, and I'm going to come down here to its object properties, and I'm going to turn on mask holdout. And you can see that that makes the floor disappear. And then we can come to our output properties and we can select our output path and we can call this model. We want to make sure we've got RGBA and PNG is going to be fine for motion. So once you've rendered out the model, you can come back to the floor object properties. You can turn off this holdout here. We can come to the model. So here with the model selected, again, we've come to the object properties and visibility. Let's turn on mask holdout for this and let's turn off the shadow. And then we can render this as the floor pass without the shadow. So come back over here and let's call this floor. OK, so once you've rendered that out, let's come back and render the floor with the shadow. So come back over to the model and the visibility. So still with mask holdout, let's turn back on the shadows like that. And then we can render this as shadow like that. So then we've got the model, we've got the floor without the shadow and we've got the floor with the shadow. And so all it remains to do is to get the X position of the scene. So I'm going to turn off the mask holdout for the for the model there. And I'm also going to turn off the floor. Let's come back there and switch to hold out for that. So then let's come over to the compositing tab. And first of all, I'm just going to add a viewer so we can see what's what. So let's pipe the image into the viewer for this time being. And also let's turn on use nodes. And obviously I need to render my image. So that's F12 in order to be able to use the compositor. So there we are. There's our image in the viewer and there's our alpha channel for the image. So that's all good. And you'll notice that we've got position enabled. And that is because if we come back over here and we look at layers, I've turned on position here. So top of this, we've got combined and we've got position. And that is giving us this little position node here in the compositor. So if we look at that in the viewer, we're getting this nice colorful RGB image. And this is the three position channels superimposed over each other. So each with their own color. What we're interested in is the X position only. So we need to extract that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a separate XYZ node. And I'm going to just pop it into there. And it's automatically chosen the X and the X is what we want. So position into the vector and the X out into the viewer so we can see what we've got. Now, what we need to do is we need to remap this so it's going to be much more usable. At the moment, the range is much too great. So let's just come back over to modeling and let's just look at the top view. And I want to use the ruler tool to measure this X width. So you'll see that that's 5.4 or something like that. And that's the sort of range that we want to be using. But we want to be, we want to give ourselves a little bit of, of leeway. So we're going to actually go a little bit further than that. So come back over to the compositing. What we need to do is add a map range node and drop it in just there. So what I'm going to do is set the minimum to negative four and the maximum to four. And now if we compare that to what we had, so what we had was that, oh no, I'm sorry, what we had was this rather, I should say, where these values are 
shooting off into massive negative values and these are shooting off to massive positive values. We've got only the value range that we want and that's evenly mapped between 0 and 1. And that's what we need if we want to be able to use it as a mat inside motion. So the other thing we need to do is we need to limit this to the model only. We don't want this pass to include the rest of the scene. And we could use the alpha channel in motion, but let's just do it here instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mix color node in here, drop that in there. I'm going to take the alpha and add it to the other image input. And then finally, I just need to set the blend mode to multiply. And you can see what that does is we're limiting the result by the alpha channel. And so now we can render that out down here as position. And now we're good to go and we can start work in motion. OK, so here we are in motion. And what I've done is I've set it up as 1920-1080 to match the Blender renders. Frame rate of 24. And let's have a duration of 10 seconds. So then let's come over and import our assets. Here is our render folder. Let's bring in the floor. So what we need to do is click on any one of the floors and select image sequence. And that's brought our floor in as an image sequence like that. Let's import the shadow. So any one of the shadows, again, click on image sequence. And that brings out that in like that. We need our model. Again, image sequence, bring that in. There's our model sitting on top. And finally, let's bring in our position pass. Click on any one of those, image sequence, bring it in. So that's our exposition pass. Let's drag that out into its own group at the top there. And let's just turn it off for now. So we are going to use this position pass as a mask for the model. So let's select the model. Let's add an image mask and let's drag the position into there. And let's switch the source channel to luminance. And you can see something is going on. So let's come back to our position. And let's come to filters and color and threshold. And what we can do is just adjust this threshold. And you can see that as we do so, we, we're creating our depth wipe. So we can affect the sharpness of that by reducing the smoothness value and probably reduce it really quite a lot. In actual fact, actually, let's go for, for, for zero. Zero is fine. We're getting sort of gr some grunginess on the edge. And normally one would be worried about that. But because we're creating this fancy wipe anyway, I think I'll live with that anyway. So what we can do is we can animate this threshold to get our reveal. So I'm going to come to the first frame. I'm going to set the threshold value to 0.2. And let's come forward to, I don't know, 175 and set that value to 0.7. And actually, we're going the wrong way, aren't we? So what we need to do is we need to come to our mask and invert it. And so now we're getting that fancy wipe on like that. So this is good. So the, the obvious thing here is that we want to be able to fade on our floor shadow. So let's come to where we can start to see the reveal happening. So that's about frame six. Let's select the shadow layer. Let's come to properties, set the opacity down to zero. Let's keyframe it. Let's come forward to 175, where our animation was complete, and set the opacity up to 100. And then we're getting that sort of thing. Now, what we really ought to do with that shadow is to do a wipe for it. But I m might come back later on and do that. But let's live with that for the time being. But for simplicity, let's open up the keyframe editor. Let's select our first point there and set it to ease out. So the shadow appears more naturally like that. Now we're getting a bit of a, an edge here, aren't we? And what we need to do is we need to slightly process our image mask here. So let's select the image mask. Let's come to filters, stylize and min max. And we need to select maximum and set the radius to one. And you can see that's got rid of that edge there. So now let's think about how we're going to create our sparkling edge. Let's close that group. Let's close this group. I'm going to call this group mat like that. And then let's duplicate it. So right click duplicate and let's turn this one on and turn on the layer inside and let's call this edge mat. So to create this edge mat, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to this threshold and I'm just going to adjust that smoothness a little bit. Let's go for 0.01 on the smoothness. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it. So right click duplicate and then I'm going to come to filters and color 
and negative. And then I'm going to set the blend mode of this to darken. So now we've got this very nice edge that we can use for our reveal. And you can see how nice that looks already. So we've got some issues here. We've got this speckling around the edge and we want to sort that out. So there's a number of ways we can do this. I think what I'll simply do is I'll come to filters and stylize and min max. This is this top layer that I'm using and we can set the radius to one. And now we've tidied that up like that. So now what we can do is use this edge mat to introduce some interesting texture onto that animated edge. So I'm going to make a new group at the top and I'm going to come over to the library and I'm going to grab cellular and I'm going to drop it in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image mask to this and let's use our edge mat as the mask source. And obviously we need to switch to luminance. So then let's set the blend mode of this group to add. Let's come over to color and levels and give it a healthy dose of levels like that. And uh, let's come into this edge mat layer here, the negative one, and again, color levels. And again, really crunch this one. So we're getting a really nice bright effect there. What we can also do is come to this cellular and duplicate it. Set its blend mode to add. And we can just change the size, maybe go for five or something on that, just so we're getting a little bit more detail in there. And then we can take this group and we can come to filters and we can add a nice glow to it. We need to reduce the threshold so we're getting even more of that. Let's come down here and just add in some blue. And now we're getting that really nice shiny reveal like that. You don't have to use super glow. Obviously you can use, probably you want to try neon for this and then you get that. And then you could probably add some color in here by coming into this levels and blue and just crunching the blue in like that. That works pretty well as well if you wanted to do it that way. Now there are some artifacts in here and you'll notice, let's turn that on and off. You can see artifacts here, and that's due to the rough nature of the mat that we've extracted for the exposition. And we probably actually just need to come into this edge mat group and filters and blur and Gaussian blur. Let's maybe go for a blur of, I don't know, 10. And let's come to filters and color and levels. And then if we adjust that black value. Hopefully you can see that we're getting rid of that sparkling the way we don't actually want it just down there. So another very useful use of blur and levels. I'm showing you this all the time and it really is one of the most useful compositing operations there is, not just for fancy special effects, but for problem solving. So anyway, I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.